This is a worktop made for wet felting. It's made from cast concrete, which is a method tried and tested for kitchen countertops. The materials are inexpensive and readily available, and you can cast various features into it as you require. So this one has a drain groove, runs around the outside, leading to an outlet here, so that you can work away and uh, not have to stop and mop up. I have cast some fulling grooves in here and by way of an experiment on this one I have inset a couple of ceramic fulling tools into the corners here. So this video will give you an idea of how you can make your own self-draining felting table. So the materials you need to make a mould, obviously whatever you make the, the positive mould is what then gets formed into the, um, the finished top. So you need something to actually make the mould in. Ideally you want a piece of dead smooth melamine faced chipboard or MFC that can be called. Uh, I haven't got a piece of dead smooth, I've got a piece with a slight texture on so we'll see how that goes. You then need a way to actually form, so this will be the actual size of the top which I think is 750mm square, I've done this one. And you then need something to form the channel so that the concrete forms around it. I have got some timber, I have planed it with a slight chamfer on both sides so that hopefully it will come out of the concrete once we've finished and I've sealed the surface um, and then before we do the concrete we're going to use I'm going to use some car wax this will form the drain so I've just got a piece of dowel here I have to put a screw up underneath to hold that in place I'm going to cover that in PVC insulating tape because I did that on a previous one it worked very well um, and then the next step will be to um, we need to add a silicon bead of silicon like you'd use around your back or shower around here which will give you a rounded edge to the outer edge of the worktop but also against the drain here uh, and rather counterintuitively, if you were doing your shower tray you would have this as clean and grease free as possible but um, I'm actually going to wax the whole thing before I add the silicon the reason being that when you come to get the silicon will stay in place long enough to cast the top. When you come to take the mould out, the one thing I've learnt, and I will show you my first one, this is my first mould. So I've actually stuck these uh, side pieces on. When I came to get the concrete out, it was the devil's own job because I couldn't dismantle it. So I've made this, these are screwed on. I have just tacked these on with hot milk glue to keep them in position and then the silicon will hold it in place. Um, but it means that when we come to take it out, I can unscrew it, dismantle the sides um, and hopefully it will come out nice and easily. We'll find out later in the video. So, um, that's where we are. So the next step, I am going to finish screwing these on. So these are sitting here at the moment, so they will screw on. I've already tacked these on. So the next thing will be, I'll screw these on and uh, then we'll wax the mould. So it has been suggested about putting f a fulling area on here and to be honest, I prefer to use um, a glass washboard. If you haven't got one of these, then get onto eBay and get one because they are fabulous for shrinking your felt. Um, I've also got some ceramic tools that I use, so um, I use these for going around the brims of the hats. Um, these are actually got the same surface as the washboard, so I've cast plaster of Paris off here and then moulded the clay in the um, in the mould made from the glass. So I've got some sort of foam board here, so I'm just sanding a round corner on the end uh, and I'm going to rely on the silicon that I'm going to put around here 
to actually give it the shape uh, once we cast it. So they will go in here like this. I'm going to hot glue first one in position and space the other ones off. Just a dab of hot glue just to hold them in place so these will sit along here. And they will be quite shallow grooves and I'm going to rely on the silicon to give it a rounded edge which hopefully will make it a reasonable fulling surface. And I've also put them up to the what will become the groove here so that the water that's in here will drain away and out of the corner. I've actually added the red tape to the uh, to the drain plug here. So this isn't ready to stick this down, it's just to tack it in place till the silicon goes on. So just gonna add a little bit of hot melt. And slip that. So now I can space these just as we move along and then we'll wax them and silicon them. So I'm going to rely on the silicon I'm going to put around here to give that its shape when we come to pour it. Oh, so right. I'm going to wax all the way around here um, and then when we've finished that every surface, when every surface is waxed all the way around um, we'll get onto the siliconing. So I'm now going to put a silicon bead around everything and see how that goes over the wax. Oops. I'm going to use that special tool, I can't resist using my finger. So the shape that you get here is what will be on the concrete. So the profile around here, around the end, back down this way, then stop, Oops, wipe off, and starting again at this end come and meet the other end. So this has cured uh, overnight and this is the advantage of having waxed the whole surface first is still having to fight to get the excess silicon off. It is a matter of grabbing hold of it off it comes. I did this last night to remind myself uh, to mention that the depth of the top is going to be 40 millimeters. So these pieces here are 40 millimeters, 40 millimeters from the top of the shuttering here to the what will be the top of the top. So we'll end up with a 40 millimeter thick top. So as before, just going to coat everything up to make sure that the concrete releases from the mould nice and easily. So in the interest of experimentation, these are my ceramic felting tools that I make. Um, glazed surface and unglazed here so when you've got wet soapy hands you can hold on to them nice and easily. This is a brim tonica and I thought it might be interesting to sit one or two of these in the corner so that you've got an area where you can just go to to fall a particular spot as you go. So uh, I might regret it but I think we'll try it and see how it works. So to make your concrete you need cement, this is ordinary Portland cement. You need ballast which is a mix of sharp sand and aggregate and a small aggregate is what you need, this is about six to nine millimetres. And in addition to that you should add some 
strengthening fibers these are also available just at your DIY store and in addition to the fibers which strengthen the concrete it has an admix which also helps to uh, work as a plasticizer and also to waterproof the concrete so ideal for what we want and you want quite a stiff mix you don't want a sort of a sloppy porridgey type mix it wants to form and stay in a ball uh, in your hand so we'll have a look at that uh, when it's ready to fill the mold a couple of extra bits of equipment we need so despite packing the concrete in by hand you need to vibrate the mold to get rid of any trapped air and we do that by um, vibrating the concrete so I've actually taken the drawers out of my unit this is sitting on so I can hit underneath all over with a high-tech hammer we could also use a sander no sandpaper but we'll use that just to vibrate the uh, vibrate the board so this is the concrete so it's wet but it's not um, not runny wet and uh, next stage is to pack it by hand into the mould so now the fun begins detail parts and if you're looking at this now thinking is this going to work and I'm thinking the same thing too if it doesn't you'll never see this video We know that this bead here is going to form the drain channel. It's like the worst episode of Bake Off that you've ever seen. Who knew felting could be so much fun? So you can see, even though this was a very dry mix, you see how it actually gets quite wet if you work it. So you can see if you've got it too wet to start with, you end up with a horrible soupy mess. and hopefully we'll let some of the finer sand particles fill the gaps to give us a nice surface. You can actually see the air coming out, actually you can see the bubbles as the air comes out. leave that for now. I should leave well alone so I'm going to. Right, so I'm going to cover this with a sheet of polythene which I had here which I now can't see but I have a piece of bubble wrap which is probably just the right size. So. Or is just too small. So we'll leave that covered 
so it doesn't dry out too quick. So concrete, as I'm sure you know, is a chemical reaction. Uh, it's not just drying out, it's a chemical reaction, so we need to leave it to not dry out, especially on a hot day like this. So we need to leave it covered up and um, you could probably take out the mould after one day, but I'm probably going to leave it to two, I would think. So we've got a bit more covering over here and we'll leave it to do its thing. So this was cast nearly two days ago. It's been covered with polythene up until just now. This is the back, so it's flattish, but hasn't been uh, made to be too flat. The only thing I have concentrated on is just around the edge. I've smoothed that with a, a little trowel, just so that when it's uh, the right way up, and you, if you feel underneath, it's got a reasonably smooth edge to it. So I'm going to strike the mould, and we're going to see what we got. Oh, that one's already... So the silicon is just holding on a little bit there, but it's coming off. So I'm hoping that these will be reusable. Have you ever seen a grown man cry? Moment of truth. So, this surface is actually not too bad. These holes are going to be grouted. Oh yes. Yeah, there we go. They've come out fine and they'll be reusable. The channel looks fine. So this is just a pure cement powder paste. So it's finished being grouted. I am hoping that the cement powder will come off reasonably easily, but I'm going to cover it uh, to keep it wet while it cures. This has been covered overnight after grouting. So yeah, it scrapes back to a Really nice finish. So having scraped the bulk of the hardened cement off the surface, you can now use a sanding block with some fine wet and dry paper, or as I'm using here, a small diamond plate, just to rub the bulk of the remaining powder off and to give you a smooth flat surface.